One of my granddaughters, four at the time, wondered why. Stopped and pointed at the late sister's photo and said, She's cute. I like her. I'm sorry she was sad. And I'm sorry she died. Dad, bear with me. The boy named Kobe, I think it's Kobe or Cole, anyway. Kobe used the internet a lot. He joined a lot of websites. He started talking to other kids online. He made friends with another boy named Stranger Danger 23. Oh dear. When I came back down, my wife was out gardening. My wife was out. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a question what was she doing? <laughs> gardening. Gardening. <laughs> well, that's the end. Welcome to episode 75 of Ghost, Ghost Hands. We think. We're not sure. Is it? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Sometimes we'll bank a few. <laughs> we'll look, go to the bank. And look behind the exciting curtain. In. Yeah. So Sometimes we bank a few. We do bank a few. So we're not sure, but it's lovely to be here, it's isn't it? It's so nice it's to be here. It's lovely to be here. It's lovely alive. for you to be here because you thought you were going to die. I thought I was going to die. Come on, ta- come on. What's going Shall on? Shall I spl- yeah. splell? I'll splell. Splell. Come on. <laughs> um, so I thought I had a lump in my boob. Yeah. Then I went to a GP. Yeah. She was lovely. Yeah. Thought I recognised the chaperone. Then she's yeah. like, look, I don't think there's anything there, but I'll, I'll get you to go to hospital and get a scan. Yeah. I go to the hospital this morning and this really lovely woman... She was so lovely. Yeah. She was like, right, I'm going to have a feel around. And I was like, not another feel around. I not was like, another one. I was like, I'm not here for you another. You haven't even bought me dinner first. Yeah, yeah I was like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very good. Oh, I fucking hate that joke so much. <laughs> but she groped me, um, yeah. and it was the second time, and I was a bit like... Stuck a finger in my vag, even though I wasn't having a smear, <laughs> so that was a bit weird. Okay, wow. Um, how do I feel like you're like horn dog today? Kenichi. I'm, I'm a horn. No, my mum listened to this. No, but you have. You, no, you, I'm not. You keep no. saying things like sexy things. <laughs> well, that's on you if you find them no. sexy, mate. That's on you, mate. <laughs> Do you have your notice with some of the hammers just been dead sexy? Really se- <laughs> so sexy. She's been saying oh. sexy things to me, and you're like, oh, you're right, I had a good breakfast. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> Actually, that's quite a funny joke, isn't it? Went to uh, hospital because I thought I was dying, so she shoved her hand up my vag and I was only there for a bit. <laughs> no, I'm going to write she that. She saw I'm my I'm going to write that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. What happened to my headphones? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what is... Come on, then. Anyway, yeah, so you anyway, went to the anyway, hospital. Anyway. So yeah. she gives me another feel, and I was I was lying there a bit disappointed because yeah. I was like, she's groping again. What I wanted was a scan. Yeah, also, yeah. Yeah. So then... Um, this is just fingers. Yeah, and then she's like... Mm, mm, mm. And she went, where do you think the lump is? And then she gets a Sharpie out and she starts scribbling on my boob. Oh, yeah. Like, so you like going for surgery. So, yeah. And then she was like, listen, I can't feel anything abnormal, but sometimes what is abnormal and, you know, it doesn't show up like that. And when you get the scan, that's when you do detect it. And I was like, oh. So then she was like, go down the corridor, get yourself an ultrasound. Right. Go ultrasound. Ultra 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 scan. Yeah. An uh, ultrasound. And... um. So then I go down the corridor and I meet, yeah, nurse. Get three. yourself an ultrasound. I'll just go and do it myself. Get yourself an ultrasound. Just honestly switch it on. Leave, let me in, I'll do it myself. <laughs> yeah. And then um, she gels me up on the yeah. right boob and then she she swells it round. Like a whoop, whoop, whoop. And uh, she's like, she's looking up at the screen like this and her eyes are like narrowing. And I was like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah. Here, oh, it's, here's the you moment. haven't got a tit. It's just tumour. Yeah. She's like, yeah, big old. Big old tumour. Big C. Oh, it's just big a tumour. Tumor. Yeah. Your whole body is a tumour. <laughs> yeah. She's like, you're actually you're dead. You're a walking tumour. Um, and then she was squinting at it. She was like, I don't see anything. Um, and then she went, look, for a woman of your age, and I was like, I don't like the way you're fucking starting that. Mm. She went, a woman of your age, it's normal to, and I'm 36, by the way, listeners, um, it's normal to have fatty, lumpy tissue. Yeah, because we're gland, young. glandular Because we're lumps. young. Good. I hope that's, that's what no, she that's meant. what she told me. When I went for my titty examination, mm. titty examination, which is what they should be professionally called, Yeah. Um, she said young women have fatty, lumpy breast tissue. Oh, and and it, what are we if not young women? Yeah, well, and and I'm a very relieved hun today. I bet, yeah. Because after that, I went, oh my god! Like the, I went outside, mm. the sun was shining. Yeah. I walked all the way yeah. from Guys in St Thomas to Spotify. I was yeah. like, Do you know what? 
I've got a spring in my I step. I feel alive. And I've paid £20 for a fucking <laughs> egg. I don't feel alive anymore. <laughs> Susie wished she was fucking dead when she's just told me that. <laughs> I got so hang on, you had two scrambled eggs, one hash brown. Yeah. A p- would, a you say, would you say a half tin of beans? Yep. Or would you say less? No, half tin. Half, half tin. tin. Okay, I didn't so finish them. Half tin of beans, a coffee and an orange juice. I didn't have a coffee. No one said coffee. What? £20 for two eggs, a hash brown, beans, a little side salad, vinaigrette, he orange wants a side juice. side salad at breakfast. Well, he, I said to him, I don't want the side salad. I want a hash brown instead. And he went, I can't do that. Look at my menu. I have to click it. Do you want chips or salad? And I was like, oh, fucking hell. I think it's for tourists because they come past Embankment and they go wandering around Embankment, little garden, tulip area. That is disgusting. Yeah, I, I won't be going there. Mugged. I will not be going there. I did enjoy myself, though, because I was glad to be alive. Yeah, but you could have been eating a big pile of dog shit and you would have been like, oh, at least I'm not dying. <laughs> I know, yeah. But I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm grateful for the service. Thank you so much for letting me pay you £20. Yeah. No, um, it was um, a strange time. But um, luckily, I'm, I'm my boobs... Are okay. Oh, congratulations! I felt exactly the same when I went for a uh, when I went to have my vag checks. Oh, I have got to go for a smear test soon now. Quite you must and tell us all about it. Yeah, I will. I will. Okay. I'm going back to my hometown um, GP, so that's <laughs> going to be fun, isn't it? <laughs> my um, I'm wearing my top that says "Too High to Sleep" that my dad the other oh, day went. That's nice. What? What? He I was looking at... at that when we did our yeah. But... Bonus episode. Yeah, baby. Um, and I thought, is that appropriate for a family dinner, Susie? Because you were going straight to a family dinner. Afterwards. Well, the thing is, to is explain to I, the, the, what it is. The reason I, I'm wearing um, a top that I, I basically. I've fallen in love with. I love it. It's a great top. It's, it a cash, says, it's like a little cash bag with a smiley face. It's, a, it's like a baggy going like skipping like this. Oh, Whoop, it's a drug ba-doo. bag. I think it's a drug bag. It's a drug bag. And then across the top it says too high and underneath it says to sleep, too high to sleep. But the yeah, reason drugs. it's funny mm. is because I don't do drugs. Yeah. If I was no, a massive is, smackhead, yeah. then no, that would be a, a be sad. worrying, sad, sad choice of top. But because yeah. I don't... Anyway, yeah. Um, so how are you? I'm well. <laughs> Absolutely nothing to report, I don't think. Mm. Um, had a very early night last night, which was nice. Went for lunch with my auntie and uncle and my nan. That was kind of it. Adam came with us. Oh, shout out to Grace Hun in the Wild who came to the exhibit. Oh, did you? Oh, did you have another Hun in the Wild at the exhibit? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh yeah. How was the gig? It was really lovely. Oh, that's good. And um, not initially. Not initially. No. No, I had to fucking build them up. You really? know, you have to just do your job. Yeah. And it's, it's shit when that happens, mm. isn't it? And you're I've like, got, I've got quite a hectic weekend ahead of me. Tomorrow morning, I have to drive from here to Exeter, which is about four Whoa. hours. Then I have to do a gig in Exeter, film and film at this door. And then I have to, um, sleep, I'm going to sleep over in Exeter, edit Fuck. our bonus episode Lovely. while I'm there. And then I'm going to drive, and then the next day I have to drive to Skegness, which is five hours. Skeggy. Yeah, and then after I do the gig in Skegness, at night, I have to drive back to Stoke-on-Trent, which is another three and a half hours. So that's... You're going to be knackered. 12 hours of driving in two days. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's, you know... Can you, like, just curl up and die on Sunday? Yeah, my mum was like, do you want to come to Manchester? I was like, no, yeah, no, no, I don't. Well, I mean, I do, though, that's the thing. But then, after that, I've only got a couple of things to do. I've got a couple of lovely things to do yeah. as well. I've got a bit of nice filming to do, which is going to be fun. We've got some pod stuff to do, which is also very fun. What's your filming, please? I'm going to play... I don't know if I can say. I'm going to play... Are you going to say, like, I'm playing something in a Shakespeare show? No, at the I'm doing the stand-up thing. Oh, so are you allowed I'm to say? To... I don't think so, so I'm no. just going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> No, I don't, I, it's it's really not a big deal, but it's um, it's going to be nice and fun anyway. And then we're going on holiday. Oh, God. we're going on holiday! I can't fucking wait. So I've just got to get through these next couple of days, which I mean, like it's just a bit of driving. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm alive. I'm living my best life. Yeah, I'm yeah. not having horrible problems. It's just driving. <laughs> so I've Would got you like to be to grateful pick a tarot for on it. that note. Yes, please. Go on. Go on. It was a shot me up, wasn't it, Susie? And you're right, I'll go for no, it. No, I'm just aware Oh, that... have you bought me a profiterole? No. Fuck. Do you know what? It's a last of Terry's <laughs> brownies you're getting. No! No! No more. Mom, no! mom, 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 mom
No, not. Terry, please give because me the brownies we're going, again. Oh, we're going to Shrewsbury Prison, aren't we, on the 24th of oh, May? Yes. And we're going to stick, because we're doing this for the Patreon. And we are going to stay at my parents. So, Mum, if you're listening to oh, this. Oh, please, Terry, could I have a brownie? Well, Mum, if you're listening to this, I haven't yet asked you if Susie can stay. So, can Susie stay? Text me back. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> I'm going to be homeless. <laughs> <laughs> and don't make her any fucking brownies. But actually, while we're on that subject, so we'll move on to the tarot very quickly. We have a bonus episode coming out on Patreon this Sunday. It is a one and a half I, hour I bonanza. I actually think it's one and a half hour, and I think it's like the most like the first episode we've I ever was just, done. It's, it's, it's early like, days energy. It's like early days, Lynn. There's, there's a good five minutes of something that yeah. Susie says that I can't <laughs> stop laughing at. That it is, I think it's one of the funniest moments it's on the pod. It's one of the funniest things that so ever So you're going to have to just, just sign up to Patreon just fucking listen to that. I honestly didn't think, I was like, I don't know how I'm ever going to be serious again. I'm never going to be able to go to a funeral. <laughs> I think I screamed that out. <laughs> But I just, honestly, go and find it on Patreon. Oh. It will be out now. Um, right. And we're going to Shrewsbury Prison. Anyway. Go on. Are you ready? What have you got? Page of Wands. It's this little, it's this little camp uh, fella again. He's not a bad one, though, I don't think, is he? No, I think he's quite sort of in with the times. He's whimsical. Um, the two page, page, He's whimsical, page. isn't he? King, knight. He's a whimsical king. <clears throat> Short king. Short king. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, page, page, page. <clears throat> page of Wands, please. This card is traditionally entitled a page. Oh, fuck it, this book. Um, but oh, he... yeah, why are we still using that I one? I don't know. Uh, a mischief maker, an innovator, an oh. inventor. Oh. The energy represented by this card will only serve others until he or she figures out how to get others to serve him or her. I'm sorry, but that is exactly the podcast. Yeah. Mischief makers. Yeah. Innovators. It's like a song, isn't it? Inventors. Yeah. Mischief maker. Innovator. I've never heard it, but yeah, I'll go with it. Page of Wands. Mischief maker. Well, innovator. fabulous. Would you like a story? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can hear the dong. Me too. In my head. Which oh, no, it says also here, rather than worry about your image... Emphasise the beneficial contribution you could make. I think what that's saying is, don't worry about your skincare regime. Give it yeah. all to charity. No. And what I say is, no. get fucked. <laughs> How's about no? No, I will, of course, give to charity. Yeah. But not today. Okay. I mean, we're fucking... We're, we're, not, we're not rich. No. Not yet, anyway. I'd like to be. Anyway, okay, you ready for a story? Yeah. Um, okay, this is um, this is a this is a scary text story. Yeah, it's not Go really on. ghosts, I'll be honest, but it's, it's no, speaking. I love that. So this is a text story. So I'll read out the name of the person who sent the text before I read them what the text entails. Okay, Dad. Hey, son. Son. Hey, Dad. What's what's up now? Dad. Sorry, I can't be there. I was delayed on business. It's only for one night and I'll be home tomorrow. Are you sure you're okay on your own? I could still get a babysitter to come over, son. Grown. I don't need a babysitter. I'm ten. I can take care of myself. Well. I think that's illegal, Dad. Okay, Mowgli. Wow. That's very good reference, actually. Very funny. <laughs> but you didn't laugh. It's so funny when people go, that was really funny, yeah. I'm like, tell, no, tell your face and no, demeanour. we do that with comedy. I'm sorry. I'm so sick of laughing. I'm sick of fun. <laughs> So sick of it. Yeah, that no, was really funny. No, actually. You know, yeah, good when, one. No, you and have like, to go. That that's was really terrifying. funny. You have to say that sometimes. <laughs> yeah, do you never do where you're sat watching a show and you're like, "That was hilarious." I'm yeah, really but I, I just think unless you've actually cracked a smile or a laugh, it's not that funny. <laughs> no, that's worse. Okay, carry on. Um, <clears throat> Dad, are you sure it can be scary spending the night alone? Son, yeah, I'm sure. Dad, well, it's past your bedtime. Son, ah, that's actually what he says. <clears throat> Dad, how about? I'll tell you a bedtime story. Son, if you must. I love that the sighs are coming through the text. <sighs> well, it says sigh, but oh. I might just... <laughs> it says sigh. I, think, well, I tried going... I tried saying um, <laughs> groan, but it didn't work, so I'm going to say sigh. Very funny, oh, If you very must. Funny. Very funny. Absolutely <laughs> hilarious. No, really funny, yeah. No, that was, that was too funny. <laughs> I only have a laugh. I am of, dead. I only have laugh at myself and you to be fair Adam tried telling me something funny yesterday and I was like I wouldn't open with it fucking hell I love the phrase I wouldn't open with it that is wouldn't only certain it. people will get that but it is one of the funniest phrases I've ever wouldn't, wouldn't open, with, open it. with it that wouldn't quit your day job <laughs> yeah. okay well it's good we find each other funny 
carry on. Okay, so he goes, if you must, Dad, is something wrong? Son, is this going to be another stupid, scary story? Dad, what? I thought you liked my stories. Son, maybe when I was a little kid, but they're not scary now. Dad, all right, I get it. So now you're ten, you're a big man. All grown up and nothing can scare you anymore. Son, well, your stories are just kind of lame. Sorry, Dad, just being honest. If you're going to tell a scary story, you need to make sure it's really, really scary. Dad, I see. Well, there is one story I could tell you, but I don't know. I think it might be a bit too scary. Son, I can handle it. Dad, okay. Here we go. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Kobe. Son, oh, this is like the start of a fairy tale. Dad, bear with me. The boy named Kobe, I think it's Kobe or Cole, but anyway. Kobe used the internet a lot. He joined a lot of websites. He started talking to other kids online. He made friends with another boy named Stranger Danger 23. Oh, dear. <laughs> I, mean, if, I mean, if you're a murderer on the internet, don't make a username. It's so creepy. Big old so... pedo, 93. <laughs> Strange pervert, 71. Do not answer the door to me, 1954. Strange pervert! <laughs> Big old pedo! That's made my head hurt. Oh, that's, you know, you get, oh, sorry, my head started throbbing. That's strange, dude. <laughs> Woo! That Don't was take cookies off me! <laughs> oh, one! <laughs> Woo! That was carry funny. On, carry on. They liked the same movies and TV shows. They played games together online. They chatted and laughed at each other's jokes. Fuck, that's just like me and you. <laughs> Son. Then they got married and lived happily ever after. The end. Dad, not quite. After they'd been friends for a few months, Stranger Danger heard that Kobe's birthday was coming up. Since they were best friends, Danger Danger, Danger 23 wanted to send him a cool present. He asked Kobe for his home address. Kobe was hesitant. If it were... <laughs> Just like Joffrey and Susie was doing this, it looked like she shit herself. The facial expression was like... Funny. Sorry, there's, there's a young lad called Colby. Yeah. Who's chatting to Stranger Danger 23 yeah, yeah. and they're, they're friends. They're mates, yeah. This is outrageous. Yeah. yeah. Stranger Danger. Stranger. Why would you even? I do, when I was looking for these <laughs> stories, I was like, yeah, great. <laughs> it never occurred to me until just now. <laughs> That was weird. No, carry on. No, I, I want to see where this goes, but I do feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> Mom, meet my boyfriend, Neil the Nonce. <laughs> Fucking hell. Okay. Uh, he, so he asked Kobe for his home address. Kobe was hesitant at first. He thought about it for a while. He'd only known... Uh, he thought about it for a while. He had known Stranger Danger 23 for a long time. So he figured it wouldn't hurt to give him his address. As long as he promised. Because Stranger Danger 23 yeah. is a very trustworthy man. Yeah. As long as he promised not to give it to anyone else. Stranger Danger 23 <laughs> swore he wouldn't. <laughs> of course he did. Yeah. Well, that makes sense, then. <laughs> as long as you eat my laced brownies. <laughs> oh, you're obsessed with brownies now. <laughs> so Kobe gave him the address, and Strange Danger 23 said he would mail the package right away. Dad, do you think that was a good idea? Son, uh, probably not. Dad, well, after a while, neither did Kobe. The boy had second thoughts about giving out his address, especially to someone he didn't really know. His parents had always told him to not do that. He felt nervous and guilty about it. The fear and the guilt grew and grew until they were gnawing away at him. By bedtime the next night, he decided to tell his parents what he'd done. They would probably be angry, they might even punish him, but it'd be worth it just to put his mind at ease. He lay in his bed and he waited for his parents to come upstairs to tuck him in. Kobe lay there in the darkness and listened. He listened to all the noises throughout the house, the humming of the refrigerator in the kitchen, the sound of the TV in the living room, the cries of his baby brother in the next room, the soft patter of the rain outside, the scraping of branches against his window. Son, the story is putting me to sleep. Dad, but there were other stories. But there were other noises he couldn't quite account for. Finally, he heard his dad's footsteps coming up the stairs. Hey, Dad, can I talk to you for a minute? In the darkness, he saw the bedroom door slowly creak open. His dad stuck his head through the doorway. Yes, son, his dad muffled, uh, said in a muffled voice. Are you OK, Dad? The boy asked. Yes, son, is Mum around? Here I am, <laughs> she said in a high-pitched voice. This has gotten really off-piss. Here I am! Oh, is this the dad? Well, this is the dad still telling the story. So this is the boy in the story. So it's very complicated. I don't know why I agreed to do it, to be honest. Um, what do you want to tell us, she asked. 
I made a big mistake, said Kobe. I accidentally gave out our address to someone on the internet. Oh, you shouldn't have done that, said his mum. We told you to never do that. Who did you give it to? Asked his dad. Um, this kid, his name's Stranger Danger 23, he seems nice. <laughs> That's when I'd be like, I've raised an idiot. I've raised an absolute fucking moron. This is moron. why you shouldn't have kids. Oh, God. Um, oh, but he wasn't really a kid, said his mum. He's just pretended to be a kid to fool you. And do you know what he did? He broke into our house and murdered both of us just so he could spend time with you, son. Oh, God, Dad. All of a sudden, the door opened wide. A fat man in a yellow raincoat stood there in the doorway. <laughs> he was holding something in his hands. <laughs> the severed heads of Kobe's mum and dad. Kobe gasped and let out, let, let out a shriek of terror. The man dropped his heads. His heads! <laughs> he just, just dropped my heads. <laughs> the man dropped... Big fat man in a yellow Big raincoat. Big fat man in a yellow raincoat. God love him. The man, the strange danger, I think. The man <laughs> dropped his heads on the floor and took out his knife. Son, no, no, no. Dad, after several hours, the boy was almost dead. His terrified screams had become pitiful whimpers and then the killer noticed something. He heard the baby crying in the other room. He bent down and pulled his knife out of the dad. <laughs> Sorry, it's confusing. It's dad and dad. Oh, anyway, when he got up, he walked to the nursery to the crib. He picked the baby up and held it in his arms. The baby stopped smiling. It looked up at him and smiled. The, ba the man had never held a baby before. He stroked the baby's cheek. He walked out of the nursery and took the baby with him. He took the baby home and raised him as his very own. He named him William. But, Dad, my name's William. <gasps> dun, dun, dun! Oh, my God. Dad, I know it is. Son? Will? William? You still there? Was that story scary enough for you? Do you want to hear another? Sleep tight, son. Whoa! Yes! <laughs> it took <laughs> some weird turns, didn't it? That, that was. Took some bizarre turns. That was quite funny. <laughs> You're welcome. That was funny. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> That was absolutely hilarious. That was absolutely <laughs> size hilarious. So I want to hear your voice what notes. What was that noise? What noise? Well, the... <laughs> I think it was my bag of food. <laughs> <laughs> it was my bag of katsu <clears throat> salad. Katsu salad. Right, would um, so a mate of mine sent uh, yeah, her because she was like, I saw her the other day. I hadn't seen her in ages. She was like, um, I'll send you a voice note of my Gorge. thing. Um, so this is from Emma. Hi, Emma. Hi, Emma. Love. Um, I'm gonna play. Your story. Are you ready? We don't usually have a WhatsApp, no, do we? No, but I like it. Mix I like the addition. It's up. Okay, here we go. Hello. Um, I'm sending a voice note on WhatsApp because Instagram has like a time limit on them. So it does, yeah, I it's very annoying. I'm not able to speak to a particular time limit. Um, but I will try and keep it brief but also give you the full details of the ghost story so i was in my second year at uni um and my room was um in a sort of courtyard with like 30 different student rooms in it and it was built it was a really old little courtyard and it was like i think it was from like the sort of plague times and it was built on what was a plague pit my room was on the ground plaguey floor. bastards and um, it had a trap door in it that went down to a crypt. So I was aware of this, like, moving oh. in. And in previous years, students had, like, gone down and had, uh, like, parties in the crypt and things like that. But that it had been carpeted fun. over the year that I went in there. Um, and basically, like, everything was fine. And, like, I didn't really have any... I sort of just got really used to it. Like, I didn't really have any experiences with ghosts until... Um, one night I had like finished my essay, I'd like done my laundry, um, hung it up to dry and then like was like, right, I'm going to go to, I was like absolutely exhausted, went to bed and, uh, the room was like split into like a little bedroom that could just fit a single bed, like just wedged into this tiny room with a door that, um, went through into like the living room with the trap door in it. So I go to sleep and I wake up in the middle of the night, um, and I just, I can't move my legs, can't move my arms, can't move my head, cannot move a muscle of my body apart from opening my eyes. I realise later it's kind of a lot, it's sleep paralysis. Um, so I've got sleep paralysis, which is, if you've never had it, like 
absolutely terrifying. Like, I could not move my body, but all I felt was, like, complete and utter horror and just was like, just, it was, uh, it was horrible. All I could do was open my eyes. When I opened my eyes, it's pitch black, but I could see, like, a mist. There was, like, this white mist snaking through from the living room because I'd left the door open. There was this white mist, like, snaking through from the living room, so it's being caught by the moonlight that was kind of coming in through the window. And I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, this is, like, this is the worst. Like, this is... L literally, I was like whatever this thing is, it's coming for me. Like, it was coming towards me. It's, like, horrible, horrible, like, snaking, like, kind of spectral white mist coming towards me. And I remember thinking, like, I can't move my body. I couldn't make a sound out of my voice. I could not, couldn't utter, like, a scream or, like, anything and was, like, I can't get any help. I can't do anything. All I can do, I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to wish that this mist, this presence, like, dissipates. So I close my eyes. I'm absolutely terrified. I'm still completely, like, like, just absolutely in full fear mode. And I'm like, right, I'm just going to just going to wish this thing away. And I'm like, please, please, please don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. Um, I don't want anything. Like, Laura. And I'm just, like wishing, wishing, wishing this thing away. And I manage eventually to fall asleep. Um, as you know, do I fall asleep? No, I don't. I open my eyes again. Yeah. I wish for it away. And I'm like, just thinking like for a few minutes, I'm like, please, 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 please go away. And I open my eyes again. I still can't move, but I can open my eyes again. And the mist is gone. It's like all completely gone. And I was like, oh God, wow. Okay. I've managed to like, that worked. Um, and I'm like, I can feel like tears running down the side of my face from my eyes. I'm like, oh God, this is horrendous. And I managed to get back to sleep. And I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh my God, like I'm gonna need to go and like tell my friends all of this because like I've just had like a ghost experience. I was so beside myself so I'd never had a ghost experience before and was like oh my god living above a crypt there's definitely stuff down there maybe I'm going to need to change rooms I don't know so I get out of my bedroom and I walk into the living room and um, I see my laundry that I'd hung up and some of it so I put some out to dry and then some of it I'd put on this really old heater that was like an extra like little heater because the room was really cold like it was like this heater was like from like I want to say like the 70s or 80s it was very 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 old and there were two pairs of pants that I'd put on my heater that is a fire and they had happened. caught fire in the night so they had like singed <laughs> holes in them Fuck! what I'd actually seen was smoke from my burning knickers um <laughs> not a ghost just a bit of singed <laughs> knickers um that was it Oh, bless. And, uh, I remain to actually have a legit uh, ghost experience. Well, yeah, there just you word, to the, word to the wise. Um, don't put your pants out to dry on a very old heater. No, and I, <laughs> I would have said don't, definitely don't do that anyway. So well, fire hazard. Oh, a cautionary tale, that one. That is a cautionary tale. <laughs> Do you want a riddle? Oh, yeah, go on. Do you want a little riddle while we're here? Go on. Um, I want you to tell me what happens. It's not right. I mean, so bad at riddles. I think riddle is the wrong word, but I want you to tell me there is an answer to Riddles this. make me feel sick. Riddle me this. I know, I'm just, it's basically just like, it's guessing the end of the story. Like, just tell me what you think happened. Yeah. You okay there? No. How okay. do you do it? Well, that big thing's... Oh. Fucking hell, that sound is broken. <laughs> For the listener, Susie's trying to plug something in. <laughs> Fuck. And she just, just ah! when Susie try, doesn't know how to work something, she doesn't go, I wonder how this works. She walks <laughs> up to it and she just fucking Spashes. emotionally and physically kicks it. <laughs> Oh, Quite grabby, as you said. Very, you're so grabby. Um, right, okay, so I'm going to tell you the first part of the yeah, story on. and then I want you to tell me at the end of this, yeah? Yeah. This morning I was awakened by banging and clattering. 
My wife was downstairs making breakfast. She doesn't usually make this much noise. I went downstairs to the kitchen. My wife had a back to me and she was cutting something up in the sink. I said, good morning. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> good, good morning. morning. <laughs> I said, good morning. But she ignored me. Then I remembered what happened last night. My wife caught me cheating on her and we had a violent argument. So today, she must be giving me the silent treatment. How long can that last? I sat down at the table and asked her when breakfast would be ready, but she carried on ignoring me. I looked at the clock, it was almost time to go to work, so I raced upstairs and hurriedly changed into my suit. When I came back down, my wife was out gardening. My wife was out the <laughs> And this is the question, what was she doing? Gardening. Gardening. <laughs> well, that's the end. I always take out the trash before I go to work, so I grab the big bag. <laughs> Fuck, I don't know what's wrong with me. I grabbed the me. big bag. I grabbed the big bag. So I grabbed the big plastic heavy bag in the kitchen. It was unusually heavy. She hadn't just double bagged it, but she'd used about four or five like, garbage bags. I dragged it out to the end of the driveway and felt, left it on the curb. It was so heavy, I wondered what was in there. My curiosity got the better of me. I untied the knot and I took a look inside. His secretary. No, it's him. He's dead. What? She murdered him. <laughs> the wife uh, murders him. That's why she's ignoring him. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't. You don't pick up on many cues, do you? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, he she's, said um, silent she's treatment. Him. Oh, she's murdered his him. secretary. Very, very stereotypical to go to the secretary season. Why? Well, bunch of slags. <laughs> No, kidding, 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 kidding. I've been a secretary for years of my life. I don't think I've ever been a secretary in all of my jobs. No, I don't think I have. Well, unfortunately, because I would have loved that. to be, I would have loved well, that slightly so, um, job. Receptionist, same thing. I don't think I ever Tits have. on desk. I'd have looked, well, I would have been perfect for that. I've seen the size of them. Oh, yeah. Utilise. Why did you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sexy. <Stop. laughs> Sexy titties. Sexy titties. Well, we know what this episode's going to be oh, called. Well. <laughs> Sexy! <laughs> Listen, there's something in the air. Okay, right. Um, Are you... Shall I read out a little link? Yes, do us a little story, please. Okay, come then. Come on then. Come on then. Come on then. Okay, Hannah, I've got a story. Trigger thank warning, you. it deals with suicide. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. About two and a half years ago, my youngest sister committed suicide. She'd had mental health issues all her life and an opiate addiction, so it wasn't a surprise, but still a shock. My daughter and I drove down to my hometown to attend the wake, and after, we went to my other sister's house to process a bit. My sister took out a collection of old family photos, and my daughter said she'd like to have some of them, and my sister gladly agreed. But they didn't go to the actual funeral? They went to the wake and then went to a sister's after to process it. That's the, that's the, the wake is the after bit though, isn't it? Not the funeral. Okay. Maybe it's different. Pedantry. <laughs> Just, I'm sorry, I so noticed it. Can you stop poking holes in I the story? I was like, no, I'm not going to say anything. Then I went, have to, and then I said it. Okay, good. Yeah, well, no, I'm glad you did. Yeah. Mm -mm. <sighs> my daughter and I drove down to my hometown to attend the wake and after we went to my other sister's house to process a bit. My sister took out a collection of old family photos and my daughter said she'd like to have some of them and my sister gladly agreed. When my daughter got home, she spread out some of the old pictures on her dining room table and was organising them. There was one of my two sisters and I, a formal portrait, taken when I was ten. My surviving sister was eight and my youngest, one. One of my granddaughters, four at the time, wandered by, stopped and pointed at the late sister's photo and said, She's cute. I like her. I'm sorry she was sad, and I'm sorry she died. My daughter nearly fell out of her chair. She knew nothing of her dead aunt, never met her, and we told her nothing of her death or the circumstances surrounding it. Who tells a four-year-old about a suicide? She's kind of a different kid, but this was strange even for her. I'm not a big believer in the paranormal, but this was really, really unsettling for me. Mm. What do you make of that then? <coughs> they I, know. I, Kids, no. Yeah, but if I've got, I've got to be I've got to be true to my skeptical self, and I think people forget how 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 receptive kids are to like you. You might not think they're listening. You might think they're upstairs asleep, and they're probably they they, they could be anywhere just listening in on all conversations. And you know what I mean. They can make their own. Did you hear that? What the rustly? That was the bag, probably. Oh, fucking bag! Can you kick the bag away? <laughs> 
face. Um, no, I think it's. Um, <laughs> I think. I think. I was making eye contact with me and moving the bag. <laughs> I think it's a. I think there's child's heard things. Oh, I don't think fine. it's a ghost. Oh well, boo, I've got to stay, I know, I know. Listen, I've got to stay true to myself. You must at I've all at to. all times. Um, should we do creep of the week? Oh yeah, have you got creep one? Creep of the week. 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 I mean, to be honest, we got a very disturbing one. I'm assuming you have one. I'm going to... I don't know if this um, wonderful person wants to... Um, definitely anonymous. Definitely anonymous. Okay. Hey, ladies, I love you guys. TikTok and podcast so much. I wanted to stand in, stand in a story about my ex-boyfriend who murdered his best friend. What? Yeah, fucking hell. I know you don't do a lot of true crime, but I hope you like the story. Oh, we, I've, we've made... We've made an exception because I need to hear this about it. This is absolutely this. wild. Ow. Hi, ladies. My name is Lilith. Pron pronouns are they, them. You may use my name as for the privacy of myself and others involved. I'll be changing my name and making the other names random letters as this case is still ongoing. Fuck. I attached photos here of my now ex-boyfriend because I don't need that shit. Of me and my now ex-boyfriend because I don't need that shit in my life. So is Lilith the fake name? I Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, from exactly one week before this shit show happened. I will also attach some links to the news articles in the email so you two can read about it in more detail if you would like. I've also received a letter from him and will attach the photo in this document. He thinks we're still dating. Oh, my God. Anywho, let's get into this now. I met H, my ex-boyfriend, in July of this year. I was going into work. By the way, I work in a haunted house. Fucking hell, this is going to be more on brand than a try. <laughs> I know. And I saw him walking up from the parking lot. He looked nervous, so I could tell he was one of our new actors. At the time, I had a different boyfriend who was also a dickhead, so obviously I didn't try anything on him. When we were all getting ready, I started up a convo to get to know him and show him the ropes a little bit as we were both working outside. He was a really sweet guy and was incredibly fun to work with. We clicked instantly, and it was nice to have another friend at work. As this was our summer show, we were only open one night, so I didn't get to see him again until we started up for our full-blown season in October. October. Uh, I shouldn't look up, should I? At this point, I was single and got to talking to him a bit more. We worked outside together the whole season, got comfortable scaring people and helping each other out with partner scares. I assume this is like, yeah, and you know yeah, exactly what this is. Yeah, you would fall straight in love, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Um, we started talking more outside of the haunt and got closer. He lived an hour away from me in the haunt, so towards the end of the season when our nights were getting longer, I'm talking as working until about one or two in the morning because of how busy we were. I let him sleep over at my house. Mm -hmm. This was Halloween weekend of our hell week where we worked six nights straight. We spent the day together on Sunday and we'd already developed feelings for each other at this point. And that night after work, sorry, and that night after work, he asked me to be his girlfriend. I said yes and things were going great for two weeks until the weekend of November 2012. Oh, or November the 12th. No, it'll be the, no, no, it's November the 12th. <laughs> H... <laughs> <laughs> H was supposed to co come over on Saturday, uh, that, which was the 12th, and was going to spend the weekend with me. He was texting me all week about how excited he was. That morning, I didn't get my usual good morning Snapchat, but didn't... Oh, God, it's, that makes me feel so old, yeah, but I don't so have Snapchat. Yeah. Um, but I didn't think much of it. I sent him something on Instagram at 11am, and he replied, calling me a sweetheart. Then he said he had cut his finger on a piece of glass and had to go to urgent care, but would try and head over to me soon. I asked if he was OK, and he said he was, so I went on my merry ass way. About an hour and a half later, I texted him again because he was running late and asked if, because I was running late and asked if he was on his way. He just said, I'll talk to you later. I'm fine, but my friend is currently missing, so I'm out looking for him. <laughs> of course, I was concerned as shit, and I said, I hope he's okay, and he said, yeah, I do too. Nothing weird, right? Wrong. That was at 1pm. This is the last text I ever received from him. At around 6.30, I get a call from a random number and I answer and it's H's dad. K tells me, which is his dad, I assume, K tells me that H's friend T was missing and H went to look for him, but now he's missing too. K had found H's phone in the neighbour's yard and found me and called me to tell me. So now I'm respectfully freaking the fuck out and can't sit still because I'm waiting to know if H is okay. So are we all caught up? K is H's dad. T's the one that's gone missing. H is the boyfriend. Um, an hour later, he called me and asked if everything was okay. He said, oh no, I, an hour later, he called me and I asked if everything was okay. Everything is far from okay, but we found H and he's safe. That's all I can say. Like, bitch! That's what somebody's... What is it? That's what, that's what they've written afterwards. Like, bitch! 
Oh. Watch him out, watch him out, watch him out. <laughs> See, it's America. They all love bitch. America. I like bitch too. You're just going to leave me with that? Now, because I listened to you all way too fucking much, my brain autom automatically went to, okay, they found T, he's dead, and now they've arrested H because he's a suspect. And all of my friends were like, nah, that's crazy. He's probably just overwhelmed. Who was right? Me, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Me, motherfucker! Me, motherfucker! The next morning, I get a call from his dad again saying the police found T's body and they have a re re reason to believe that H did it and now he's in fucking jail. This sent me into a full-on panic attack, but it's chill. <laughs> the boy I fell for, the sweetest and most caring person I'd ever met, killed his best friend of 10 years. Now, I don't know all the details, but here is what I gathered. T was supposed to stay with H... Oh, fucking piss off. People are messaging me. T was supposed to stay with H on Thursday on his way to visit his girlfriend. Friday comes and T's girlfriend hasn't heard from him. H texts T's girlfriend and said that T's phone was dead and plans to and plans changed so T would stay with him that night and drive to her on Saturday pretty sus if you ask me Saturday morning police get alerted to another abandoned car at 10.40am this car was in a ditch behind um, a levee I don't know what that is at a park and was a neutral so somebody pushed it in there they figured out who owned the car and contacted the parents who had not heard from T since Thursday. This turned into a Mrs. Persons investigation. According to the police report I found, H was at the scene around this time and spoke to the police that were there. He said that he and T were out drinking the night before. He went back to his house to share a bottle of wine. Apparently, T didn't drink very often, so he ended up throwing up in an upstairs bathroom. H then went downstairs because T didn't need any help, and that's when he dropped a bottle and cut his pinky. He didn't tell the cops which urgent care he went to or when, though questioned him at his house at this time. H said after he went to bed, he woke up at around 1.30am and saw that T and his car were gone. At around 3pm, one of the officers went back to the car and after inspection, it found blood in the trunk. Jesus. They went back to H's house to question him some more. I'm not sure how many officers were there, but one was standing near the front door talking to H and at least one went upstairs after receiving verbal confirmation that he was allowed to look around the residence. They went up to the loft where T was staying and immediately saw cleaning supplies. The bed was stripped of its sheets. There were bodily fluids on pillowcases on the floor, puddles, puddles of blood on the foot of the bed, blood on the ceiling, a smear of blood on a piece of furniture. Jesus, really violent attack. One of the officers downstairs saw the dryer running, opened it and saw stained shit like what a fucking idiot. Saw stained sheets and H fled the house when he saw that the officer was looking in the dryer. The cops who was talking to him chased after him, but H hopped a fence and managed to get away. I'm assuming this is when he dropped his phone in the neighbour's yard. Um, where his dad found it later in the day after they got home. Later that day, around seven, they found T's body about three miles away from the car. T had been stabbed twenty times, was disemboweled. <laughs> Fucking partially hell. decapitated as well as almost missing one of his arms. This poor fucker. And was found in a six by eight foot hole under a large uprooted tree, buried under about a foot of dirt. You can't bury a body oh under a foot God. of dirt. Oh my God. So this is mad. like frenzied, planned, awful. I don't know, like you're not lopping arms off. Fuck. Fucking hell. They ID'd him with his college ID and it was tea. Now I don't know if you're. Y'all! Y'all! I don't know if you caught on to this time, but the car was found at 10.40. H texted me at 11. The motherfucker was texting me after his murder, after he murdered his friend as if nothing was wrong. T had been dead 18 to 20 hours before he was found, so he probably he was probably killed when H woke up at 1.30 to find him missing. He ended up turning himself in after the murder warrant was executed. He was indicted at the end of January on charges of felony murder, aggravated assault, aggravated battery, concealed the death of another, abandonment of a dead body and theft by taking as well as misdemeanor removal of body parts from the scene of a death, tampering with evidence and obstruction of an officer. H is hell. still being held without bond and is awaiting trial. No more updates have been released. That's all the info I have in this right now. I am now friends with T's girlfriend and we are forever trauma bonded. This isn't a fucked up sign. Um, from the universe telling me to stop dating. I don't know what it is because I can't trust anyone now. Maybe I should have told him to channel his editor Ted Bundy for his characters all of October. Um, I think he got too into it. But there you guys go. The story of my murdering ex-boyfriend. Oh my How God. How fucking gross That you actually like, slept that? with someone and... and... Mm, so oh. spooky. Can you believe that? And then he sent, like, like I mean, I'm assuming this. We so he sent her a letter. The, we can't put that on the pod, though, can we? What? Those pictures? No. no. Sadly <laughs> not. Um, but I can't. He sent her a. He sent her a letter. I'm not going to read out any names, but. 
Do you know what? I'm sure I've heard about this case. Really? Yeah. Um, so, dear... What did we call her, Lilith? Yeah. Dear Lilith, um, hello, I'm sorry for all the confusion and that I have to be away so long. I'm currently waiting to meet with a psychiatrist. I'm doing pretty well here in jail. People are much nicer than I would have expected. I miss you so much. I miss going to IHOP with you. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a text you'd send to a mate. You're like, you want to go to Sainsbury's and grab some stuff? Sainsbury's? I don't want to be mates with you. Go to <laughs> Do you want to go to Sainsbury's? You know, a big day out with Susie today. We'll to that is horrible. We've oh, been to Sainsbury's quite a lot. Yeah, we have actually. And I've had a lovely time I'm just, in there. I'm just, you know, more, <laughs> just trying to be respectful of this guy Sorry. that's been murdered. He's like, wait, I love Sainsbury's. <laughs> no, that is really fucking sad. I wonder why. Oh, fucking hell. But I just can't... People are just mental, I just can't they? get my head around that one. Like, no, it's, it's almost... Mad. Too... I'm going to have to get... I'm definitely going to be fucking looking at that later because you don't like true crime, though, as much as I love true yeah. crime. But it's that... It's but I'm that... intrigued what his, like... Like, was that planned or was it just... Yeah. He, he just suddenly absolutely freaked out and then just went on this fucking spree. I think he's just fucking psycho. And th- I mean... You just that, don't know someone, no, do you? No, you can't. You can't. You it's never know someone. It's quite worrying. It's like, the, it's like the men that kill the wives after, like, 30 years of marriage. It's like, did you honestly think that that was possible when you got married? Adam could kill me. Yeah, but, like, the and thing is, you're, just, you're never, never going to know. No. How do you know that's with, within him? Um, okay, shall we do a quick? We get on to see you today. Yes, have yeah, so you got one? Have you? You have you? <laughs> <laughs> Stop testing uh, can me. I have. Well, I thought actually, uh, I thought I'd do. We'd do the little electronic Ouija board again, but do it individually this time. Oh yes, please. Pulled it out my ass, didn't I? I forgot all about it. Good. <laughs> I pulled it out my ass every time. Um, okay, so I'm going to just do a little. I really, because I'm going to close my eyes. That's why I'm doing it Go again. Then. Because when we did our bonus episode, it was fucking moving around like nobody's it business. It was. Wasn't it? South Bank is haunted. Oh, so I, I've now got an, a, a candy crush I had to get through. Hang on. <laughs> oh, don't get me fucking tempted. Oh, and candy crush. I, I lost a crush. lot of hours of my life to that. Did you? App. Yeah. I could never get Never into paid, it. though. Right. Go on. Okay. What are you doing? No, no I, if this is podcasting, my, it's bad. I'm going to put, my, I'm gonna put my finger on the planchette, right? All right. Well, you explain it to me like I'm not. Okay, so it's a Ouija board on my phone. Yeah. And I'm going to put my finger on the planchette. Go on then. Okay. I'm just shutting my eyes. Shut your eyes. What the fuck is that? I just got a shiver on me. It's because there's a ghost. I'm just, that says. Right. Oh, fuck. I'm just... My finger's on the planchette, you fucking... Keep saying, my... keep your finger on the planchette. Oh, it's going mental. Is it? What's it saying? I don't know why it keeps doing that noise. Oh, my God. So it's I'm just, is I'm it? just, and then we're waiting for the... I'm just. I'm just. AR. I'm just. I'm just arse. I'm just AR. I'm just. I'm just an arse. Yeah, well. AR. Do we know anyone called with R. AR? R. A. Adam? Bro. Adam. Bro. <gasps> a bit, bit weird. Are you? I'm just. Are you? Are you S? Russia. <laughs> they are the enemy. Apparently, we're going to war. Did you know that? Great. Well, that's the end of that, isn't it? Are we no, going to we war? are. We're going to war. No. Rishi Sunak has said he's preparing for um, war defences. Well, I have to say, if we are going to war, I don't fancy our chances with old Rishi at the helm. Well, no, but you'll get called up. Why? Well, you're under 35. What do you mean? Ha ha. <laughs> Bye. Have fun in war. <laughs> have, have fun Woo! in war. Have fun at the war. Have fun podcasting alone. Yeah, well, I'll send you well, some missives the from same, the studio. Fuck. You're gonna get called right up. No, I'm no. You'll be in Ukraine before my you know it. And also, big. Bichkovsky. Oh, you're front line. No, my boobs are too big. What do you mean? Won't, won't. There's no fucking. They can't send a big boobs lady. Yes, to they the... can. No. They're gonna send you to honey trap the troops. So we're actually going to war because I really don't fancy that. <laughs> yeah, just look it up. Big war. And you know what? Our parents' generation have skated by with no war, warless. <laughs> And now we're taking the... Bro- they got Skated cheap by. houses, yeah. no wars, and now we 
we're going to war. Can't afford property. So this might be the war. end. Is it bad that I'm not asked? Yeah, well, what can you do? That's the thing, you can't do anything. But can't you can't do anything. control the war. No, no you can't control The <laughs> war controls you. Yeah. I so just think that we should hide out here, actually, yeah. in the Spotify studio basement. They um, have some good snacks, to be fair. Well, listen, if we don't die via war, we'll <clears> see you next week. Yeah, see you next week, baby. And if you want some more, go and find the bonus episode on Patreon. Oh, enjoy your hands. And don't forget, there is a bit of merch and it's flying off the bloody shelves. Go and get yourselves a little jumper, get a, a little cappy, fucking get t-shirt. a tea and be dressed for summer in our gear. We enjoy. love you. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.